Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been a while since I posted a video, but I figured why not post a what's in my camera bag video. This is a long awaited and the last one I posted was years ago. So welcome to the updated camera gear walkthrough. I'm gonna walk through all of the camera gear that I use on a daily basis, what's in my camera bag, the accessories that I bring with me. We're gonna dive into all of it and I'm gonna show you some example pictures along the way. So first I wanna start with my camera bag itself. It's a little heavy. <laughs> This is the Wandered camera bag. I have had this bag for years and I don't plan on getting rid of it. It's amazing. I love it. I bring it to every single wedding, every single session. It's rainproof, waterproof, I think. It has lots of dividers, super customizable, lots of pockets. 10 out of 10. We even use it when we don't bring our camera gear. We just use it as like a regular backpack as well. Okay, so let's get into some of my camera gear. I'm gonna start with what is currently on my camera, never leaves my camera, is the G Master 35mm f1.4 lens along with the camera body that I use, which is the Sony A9 II. This is the combo that you can catch on my camera, I would say 80% of the time. I love shooting on my 35 millimeter. I specifically will use the 35 millimeter for lots of moments during a wedding day, but specifically I am using this lens during getting ready, because you have to think when someone's getting ready on a wedding day, it's usually like a tighter space, a tighter room. So I'm using a wider lens, like like this 35. So getting ready, I love to use it during portraits as well. I primarily am using a 35 for portraits and then I will have my second shooter doing a longer focal length like an 85. As far as the other times on a wedding day that I'm using this lens, typically I don't find myself using this too much on like the ceremony side of things just because I get a little scared that I'm gonna miss something. This is a pretty wide lens. I feel like I can't get a ton of detail the one time I do use this lens during a ceremony is actually on like the exit. So I'll typically have my second shooter getting like a closer up detail shot of like the kiss and the rings. But then for me, I'm the one that's capturing that exit. And typically that is on a 35 millimeter. I also use this lens a lot during a reception, not so much during like speeches and dances, but more so during like dancing. I love this lens. I think it's perfect for those fun like party shots. Honestly, I'm using this lens all the time. Let's move on to my next focal length that I keep in my camera bag. We have the G Master 50 millimeter F1.2. This is a pretty new lens for me, probably within the past year I got this lens and I love it. It is my favorite lens and I find myself using it more and more. Okay, maybe it's not my favorite lens, but it's definitely becoming one of those lenses that I think I'm gonna have a hard time like getting rid of if the time ever came to that. I feel like I would have a really hard time letting go of this lens. So the reason I have this lens in my camera bag, why I bring it to like every single shoot, the focal length is just iconic. I mean, it's not super wide like a 35. I also keep an 85 in my bag as well. It's right in between and honestly, it gets me a little closer than the 35, but it's still not super close that I feel like I, you know, have to back up super far to get a shot. So typically this lens is not used super frequently by me during a wedding specifically. The main times I find myself using this lens always for when the bride walks down the aisle, I'm always using this lens. Occasionally I'll use the 35 when the bride walks down the aisle just in case like if it's a little bit of a tighter squeeze. But most of the time I find that I'm capturing walking down the aisle with the 50 millimeter. And I also find myself using this occasionally during portraits. I do think it's like really a pretty focal length and a lot of the times I'll actually use it for like separate wedding parties. So like just the bridesmaids or just the groomsmen, I'll use this lens if those parties are not super big. If they're super big, I will be using the 35 millimeter. That is primarily the times that 
that I'm using this lens. I also use it during first dances at a wedding. I find that it's, like I said, it's close enough that I'm able to get some details, but it's not so far away that I feel like I'm not capturing anything. So that's what this lens is for. I also bring it to like engagement shoots, kind of as just like a fun little alternative. Sometimes I'll start on this lens and then transition over to my 35 later on in the session. Okay, like I mentioned, I also keep an 85 millimeter in my bag. This is the G Master 85 millimeter F1.4 lens. This lens is everything you could ever want and more. Specifically for weddings, it's perfect and I will tell you why. So I'm not using this lens for the getting ready portion. It's just kind of a given, the getting ready space is usually pretty small, but I love this lens for portraits. Like I mentioned, I usually have my second photographer on this lens getting, you know, pretty detailed shots of like hands, flowers, but also like it gives you a nice blown out background and really creates nice separation between your subject and the background. This, this is just like a really nice lens to have, especially for like a second angle, having someone else shooting like a different angle on this lens while you're shooting maybe a 35 straight on. That is primarily the times that I'm using this lens. I also always use this lens for speeches at a wedding and first dances. A lot of the times weddings are very low lit, like there's minimal lighting. So that's a really good time to utilize the f1.4 aperture capability. I'm using this lens for a time where I need to get up close and personal, but also need to keep that aperture lower as well. During first dances, I'm always trying to get like those detail shots, maybe from the waist up where you can really see like my couple's face and stuff. That's what I'm using this lens for. I don't find myself using this lens for portraits or like engagement sessions or anything like that quite yet. I could see myself using it in the future, but for now, that's just kind of how I use this lens. Next, we have my newest addition to the family. This is the G Master 70 to 200 F. 2.8 and this is the Mark II version. I low-key am obsessed with this camera lens. I just got it like maybe three weddings ago so it's very new to me but like the ability that this lens has is insane. I will insert some pictures of photos that I've taken using this lens. Specifically during a wedding ceremony, I love how I'm able to like be everywhere all at once is what it feels like. It's also like a really good lens for capturing candids like during a cocktail hour or at the dinner at a wedding. Like I feel like I'm able to be all the way across the room and right next to me all at the same time because it can zoom from 70 all the way to 200. So this is a lens that I have been loving for candids, for events, stuff like that. I don't really think I'm gonna be using this for like a portrait session anytime soon, but for weddings and events, this lens has become a very big staple in my camera bag very quickly. So a quick little shout out to my second camera and my second lens. This is just like a backup lens. I have another Sony A92 that my second photographer shoots on. And then I also have a, another 35 millimeter. This is the Zeiss 35 millimeter F1.4. It's a really great lens. Lens. This is what my second shooter will use when I am shooting weddings. So that's it for my camera bodies and lenses, but I wanted to show you guys the flash that I have been using. This is the Godox V1 flash. I love this flash because it has like a round head. And I also bought this flash that comes with like an accessory kit. So it comes with the dome as well. So I can have like a nice dome diffuser if I ever want to use it. I use this flash all the time. I use it from getting ready all the way to the end of a reception on a wedding day. I use it sometimes during engagement shoots. I'll use it for like a little bit more of a film vibe and I'll just point my flash directly forward like this, put it in TTL mode. It's good to go. One of the highlights of this flash that I always mention is the fact that it has this rechargeable lithium battery. 10 out of 10. Love this. I don't have to charge this battery for multiple weddings, which is insane. And it's life-changing, truly. If you don't have this, go get it. They have it for Canon, Nikon, Sony, all the brands. They have this flash just for you. 
So the last thing I wanted to mention that I always keep in my camera bag is my star point filter. This I just started using, I think this year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just been this year, but basically it's a filter that I put over my 35 millimeter and it has like little star points that will come out and like these little stars will appear in your photos when you shoot on something reflective. So a lot of the times I pair this with my front facing flash and I'll get like super fun stars. It also creates a nice like dreamy haze as well. So sometimes I'll just use this for portraits to create like a little bit more of an artistic mood in my photos. That's when I'm using this. I typically actually just keep this in my pocket when I'm shooting just to have it ready to go. And I chose this to have on my 35 millimeter because I find that anytime that I'm getting like vibey moody photos, typically it's going to be with my 35. So that's why I got this star point filter in the size to go over my 35 millimeter. Okay guys, that is it for my camera gear updated video. I hope you liked this video. I would love to hear more ideas of what you want me to post to my YouTube channel, specifically for YouTube, like YouTube exclusive content. What do you guys want to see? What video should I make? What should I talk about? I'm trying to keep these videos in like the 10 to 15 minute range. So let me know what you want to see. And I'm super excited excited to start making some more YouTube videos for you guys. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the like button. Besides that, I'll see you in the next video.